Hey, what's going on? We get the stream down. I I've gotta pump it out to a couple channels, but we're gonna be uh, casting the EU tournament today. Uh, EU three v three, hosted by Ostro. Try to get the music. I need a little bit of St. Patrick's Day music for today. Just wouldn't feel right if I didn't have a little bit. There we go. Try not to break the server again. But we should be up and running. So uh, as we uh, kind of wait to get started, I know Ostro said it was going to kick off uh, in just a little bit. I wanted to show... Uh, he's got the brackets running. Hopefully they'll be updating live throughout the stream. If I can get it to work. There it goes. Uh, but this is kind of looking what it's going to be like for the day. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty good lineup, honestly, of different groups. But it is going to be something that um, I haven't casted a 3v3 in a while. Um, so it'll be a little bit different. So the, in the previous 3v3 EU tournament, they only had four teams. Uh, and the heroes came out on top, uh, the 51st. So heroes of Minden. Uh, Sin came in second. And uh, this one has eight teams. So it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, so it should be a little bit more time with the EU guys. So we're going to be getting used to it. I want I wanted to stream the last two NA ones, but I wasn't available. And one day I just felt like crap and I couldn't do it. And honestly, I had just gotten on to check my Ross server. Uh, and somebody was like, hey, Ostro is going to be doing the 3v3. Do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, I got time before I go down to the parade. So uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to anybody out there that's celebrating. I know I'm going to try to celebrate a little bit on stream so I can prepare for going down to the parade. He. <laughs> um. But that's kind of what today's looking like. Uh, I know Ostro's getting everything set up right now. Um, my goal is to stay in the uh, <laughs> free view uh, and not screw everything up. So he'll be uh, doing some admin updates, but that's kind of what the brackets are going to be looking like. Uh, let's get to the game stream. Hey, Safety, what's going on? Thanks for coming by. Ever, I never had this stuff. The Guinness uh, Extra Stout stuff is amazing. Alright, we're off. 51st, kicking it off. Ooh, that was really quick work of two guys there. That was insane. Close melee can be crazy uh, with 3v3 just because... Ooh. The close melee can definitely be crazy. I'm going to kill the music real quick. Because you can get uh, some quick hits like that just happened right there. And you had two deaths almost simultaneously that there's no time to regroup and really refocus. And uh, when that happens, it can be a little bit of a cluster. So Brotherhood versus 51st of the first round. This should be a good match. I like these 3v3 setups. Um, they're a lot more competitive than a group fight, where I think a group fight's so chaotic, it depends on what your weakest person is. Here, you can get some picks. You get some good feints to throw people off. So that's, See, that's a good move right there. See him regroup, try to make sure it's not just a 1v1. He pulls him back a little bit closer. So he's got his second right there. Perfect. That was a really good play to kind of regroup and, and recenter the match right there so you're not so far off and hoping that you can just do a 1v1. And it's not even that there's pressure coming from that other person. It's the thought of pressure that someone might get a backstab on you.
Hopefully you guys can hear the game. I messed with the, uh, oh, they're doing a little bit of a, a push left here. See, the, the interesting thing that you're, you're getting at here is they're, the round right now, they're not playing, they're playing a little bit more individual than a line. What I'm going to be curious to see is if you, ooh, nice. I'm going to be curious to see if we get one of the regiments that actually play more as a line versus uh, individual. I'm not playing in this tournament. I'm just casting two taps. But it's good to see you. I keep seeing your Instagram lives lately with you playing the guitar, man. It looks friggin' awesome. You've gotten really good. I want to see, hopefully find a video or a recording of you jamming out with the band. I gotta get, they keep pushing this way a little bit more. See, here you go. Here's, they try to get a 2v2 there. He, there's the backstab. Now group up, group up, nice. I think the nice thing about at this level, there is a chance like, oh, there is a chance that even if you're 1v2, 1v3, you can come back from that. Very easily come back. It just depends on the skill of that other team to play highly defensive. It depends if you're going to be able to <clears throat> get catch a nice block to delay their throw and then kind of flip behind them and get a nice spin hit. And team kills are always definitely a consideration. They're going to be less of a consideration in this 3v3 unless you see a lot more close range. You saw um, right there where the guy ended up pairing off and doing a target switch and really tapping somebody down. You've been writing a funk song, two taps? That's sick, dude. Send it to me. I'd love to hear it. All right. There you go. GG, first of five. Oh. Uh, I'm going to try to cast, send this into the hold fast um, conversation real quick. I know Ostro kicked it out on his server, which was really cool of him. I'm going to kick this over to the actual official hold fast general. see here so let's see we he said the bracket should be updating if we've got this right and they are so you got heroes that are going to make it through five nothing in that first round against the the brotherhood uh big clubs versus the gentlemen again this is the the second time we're running the eu tournament this time with eight teams um heroes and uh i think i mean 63 e eu is insane uh have i played big clubs as my reg so who's big clubs what's big clubs regiment out of curiosity No, nope, we're going, and I'm tabbed out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, that was my bad. 2v2. They're not holding the line, so you're going to get a couple stabs here. Oof. Nice work. KRA's big plebs? Okay, thank you. Two taps. I have played a little bit of the... Uh, I have played a little bit of the PS3 revert in uh, H1 and uh, or Z1BR or whatever we're calling it right now. How does two moose even melee literally nine hundred? <laughs> uh, the revert was cool. I don't know if it's gonna get me back. Again, I like it depends on what the line's gonna allow. But right there, if he can get back and get a backstab, these 3v3s need to refocus and try to approach it as a, as a group fight. I think if they approach it as a group fight, they're going to be stronger um, because if they can hold that line uh, and sort of get around from the sides versus break off into individual 1v1s and see what happens from there, it, they're going to be a lot more strong when they come approach towards mid-fight. But we got some interesting strats that are going. See, there's two quick kills right there, all because it was a 1v1. Nice. Oh, the first team kill of the day. Who's the winner? St. Patrick. Oi, Solancha. And the nice thing, the rounds are going to be damn quick here. They're going to be super quick because of how the setup is on this particular map. 
Alex TK two moose. <laughs> that was a nice TK. First one of the day. I I'd like to see a couple more, but I'd like to see him be uh, forced TKs from my uh, actual battles. All right, here we go. I'm working with my camera in a new spot, so I'm sorry if I block any of the gameplay. Nice. Oh, another TK by Alex. Alex is uh, really, really racking him up. Was that Moose again? <laughs> yeah, uh, two taps. It's really not when we end up casting these uh, these competitive ones. It's nice to get it out to the community, honestly. So. So you get a couple people that are coming in looking for gameplay. Nice kite. There's the line. There you go. That's what's going to be good. Now it's open melee. Now it's about skill. Nice. That, see, that's what needs to happen. If they're able to ha hold that kite and really hold that line, they're going to really, really be strong in those moments. That was an awesome, awesome play. I'm getting these are to five. I think it's five to the first round. I actually didn't hear Austro earlier. See, this game I think is uh, usually advertised mostly by meme, <laughs> depending on what the in-game prox chat is like. But uh, it's honestly a, the melee component of this is good. Nice quick kill by Galahan. Ooh, and a revert. If he gets in there for the backstab, it's GG. Nope, but you got a one v one now. Good block. Good close combat. Nice. Green lighting for St. Patrick's Day, Tabby. How's it going, brother? All right. 4 2. Recovering from yesterday. <laughs> Brotherhood got unlucky having the best play against. It's either advertised as super serious line battles or as a big meme. It really depends. It depends on what you end up playing. Here's a nice nice play here. You got a 2v1 over in the background. I'm going to stick with Galahan right now. See, there's the smart play to run in back and regroup. He didn't do it soon enough, though. Did not do it soon enough. Nice. And this is the beauty about hold fast melee. You can come back pretty quickly. Even in a 3v1. There it is. Nice, 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 nice clinch for that one. That's a good GG. That could have gone a different way in that if they hadn't played it so well. So that moves us into the uh, first round, into the third game in a second here. Um, so you're going to see some things a little bit different. You're going to see the 63E and the good boys. Uh, 63E, from firsthand knowledge, their melee is insane. Uh, so it looks like good boys GB 63 is going to be a very cool fight to see. Um, but let's see who we've got ending up for this particular bracket. And it looks like that's going to be Heroes of Maiden and Gentlemen in the next round. Hey Zen, what's going on? 63 up right near tallest kind of Joe and Salty Stick. That right there from first hand knowledge and playing against that, that is a damn good team. Toast. Joran. Miss this guy. Headshot. All right, here we go. See, 63 holding that line. This is what we've been talking about all day. If they're able to hold that line, that allows them to break for a backstab and allows them to recenter on particular individuals versus really focusing on one uh, 1v1 fight for all three. If they're able to hold that line each and every time, they're going to do great in each and every round. It's the, It just depends on how your 3v3 is really set up. And honestly, if you hold the line, you have a better chance of winning these uh, first to fives. See them? They're going to stay close. They're going to force them to bring in. And they're not going to look at the 1v1s. They're going to look for picks. You got one guy that comes in. He comes in the middle of the triad, gets an easy kill on him. Tallis and Kinda are going to be able to really center on this guy right now. Communicate of who's going up, who's going down. 
and you're going to get it each and every time. That's nice. But this is what we were starting to talk about from the first two games. You can see a difference of the 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 group fights in the 3v3 if you're going to focus on how it is that your team is going to approach if it's either a 1v1 or 3v3. Here's the mine is the 51st, correct. Okay, they're starting to revert to understanding that they should focus on center, but they're not. So you've got him. It looked like a team hit. He comes into the group of three and is able to get killed pretty quickly. Look at that. That's crazy. I think that might have been the first hit that 63 he took. Who's standing out on these teams? It's all see, okay, this is the thing that I like too. Is if you're in a big group fight, there is definitely a spread of things being a little bit more individually focused. So you'll get an individual with a high kill amount. This right here, the 63 is spreading kills pretty nicely. He's gonna trying to see this is the thing. I don't know why he's breaking off so much. I know he's trying to get behind their line. But their footwork and how they're kiting and pressing is going to allow them to stay strong. They'll forfeit one kill for taking two out, though. He might go down, but you got the other guy that's supporting. Nice. Beautiful plays. 4-0. It looks like the good boys may have subbed somebody out there by the looks of the scoreboard. There's a quick kill by, Ta ki quick kill by Tallest. You get a 2v1 over there, and you even see already that he's trying to force him back so you can get a 3v1. Oh, here's the thing. This is the part that... Uh, that was the part right there that can be usually pretty cool, is that even in a uh, 3v1... You can still do well to, uh, you know, move move forward in those rounds. Um, we had a match last night that was, a, I believe, a line battle. Uh, and someone got 14 kills in melee in the line battle. And it was 1v, like, 10 in the end. It was insane. It was Grimm's. So 63 sets up the next round. Uh, Heroes of Maiden versus Gentlemen. And then Beta and Sin. Sin was a, a part of the last 3v3 tournament. I think they came in second, but they're going to have a hard battle. Um, whoever wins against Beta and Sin is going to have a hard battle for the next one. Is this the most viewers that I've ever had? I had had one host that got me to a pretty decent amount of viewers in the past, but I, uh, on average, get a decent amount of viewers for these uh, tournament castings. I might be one of the few people that are actually um, focusing on streaming some of the competitive play things for Holdfast. I mean, Holdfast doesn't have a big streaming community. There might be 10 people that do it consistently. And then there are some bigger streamers that end up coming in, but uh, like Soviet Wobble. Um, but I, I don't think he pays it really competitively. And Soviet Wobble has a big YouTube ki um, community. So so this is the second set of 63E, Die With Pride. Tin Tin. Elf is amazing. Nice spin. That's one of the first nice spinners that we've seen today. It's going to force him to close range, but he's going to get behind him pretty easily. And because he gets behind him, he's able to like kind of nick his ankle. Womble plays the Thursday public line battles weekly on stream. Yeah, and I think he, he can sometimes get hold fast a thousand viewers when he does that. And he's pretty entertaining. I enjoy it. It's usually uh, when I'm at work that I get to watch that one, but uh, we'll not talk about that because of uh, the time zone he's on. You can notice the difference here. Um, I think one thing about this group of 63E is they're not as focused on maintaining the line. 
And since they're not as focused as maintaining the line, and it does look like Sin is a little bit more centered on maintaining the line, they're able to get the picks a little bit easier. But I think also you've got a battle with, you've got some people on this team, especially uh, ELF Elf. He's a solid individual player. Kind of watch his gameplay on the far end. Air 63 holding the line a little bit stronger this time. But you got a break. There's your pick. Now you can go and do something a little bit different. Hopefully get a backstab. There's your backstab that you end up getting. You get forced, but you ended up having to maintain a 1v1. Bandage is really good. Up. Oh, there's the pick. There it is. Greetings from Peru. See, that one... It, <coughs> 63 looked pretty strong in that, but it, again... As much as that can um, win a game, it can also not be the thing that gets you through when you get some people with some decent raw talent. You get some people pushing and kiting in this. This is nice. This is interesting. Pull some people off the main line. Get a couple backstabs there. You've got open melee completely here. And whenever you get open melee, you've got to worry. You've got to worry about that. Nice. They're doing comms in game, which is odd. Uh, <laughs> uh, the comms in game is never helpful, but that can give away sort of your strat. Because in the end, uh, when it melee is just musket, it's either up, down, um, for the blocks. And if people know where you're coming from, or they know what your strat is for how you are organizing the line, that can provide a little bit more of an advantage to the other team. little bit more broken melee here so you've already got one guy off in the distance so he can't get support from his other group oof there it is you call up down right there when you got one person left can't block one hit that's coming from up and one hit that's coming down at the same time tend to eating good boys for the win yeah But you see it here. Uh, you've got some people that are a little bit stronger on the other team. 63 is just not having a... Not making it through as strong as the other 63E group. See, he's already broken off to the end here. And, he, and immediately you saw him go in for that backstab because he's broken off too far that you can't get that support. This should be GG pretty quickly. There's the up and down. That's tough. GG. I was 5-1. Give him a little credit. Give him a little bit of credit. But that's going to take us to the next game. So for the second round, uh, Heroes, which is 51st versus Gentlemen, and then the other 63E group versus Sin. Again, Sin ended up getting in uh, second place last time. So... Uh, I do not believe that it is free, but I believe, what is this right now? I think it's on sale. Are we in the sale week right now? I think it is on sale. No, it's 20, 20 bucks. So um, I do believe there is a potential sale coming soon, is what I've heard in the rumors. They seem to put this on sale pretty frequently, so... Um, but at the same time, I think the value is totally value, but uh, 20 bucks. Holy crap. Valky one just subscribed. Valky, thank you so much for the sub. It is much appreciated, my friend. Thank you so much for the support for coming in the stream the last couple of days. It's been very kind to you guys. Greetings from Ireland. Shout out to the 51st. Happy St. Patrick's Day, my friend. Frederick17, thank you so much for the follow. Friedrich 17 is growing a beard. You gotta have a beard, especially during the winter. 51st is doing some real good work here. 
you've kind of got him trapped in the middle of the three of them and that that sort of triangle that little death triangle that they're end up focusing on right there is really really nice happy saint patrick's day guys this is the way i'm kicking off before i head down to the parade in my area <laughs> All right, here we go. You have the best beard here. <laughs> oh, wow. See, this is the thing that I understand what they're doing. And if they can do that to um, per, like, kind of capitalize on a weakness by separating one guy out, like if they have an idea of a weak meleeer to get him out of the group and to knock him out very quickly to get some backstabs, that can be pretty sick to do. Um, but you're not going to have many weak meleeers in this tournament. Um, it worked out for them on that play there, but <coughs> looks like we get some subs in this round for this 3v3 group. We've now got uh, Lamex, St. Patrick, and Arthur in. Uh, Galahan sat out, Lancelot sat out now. Here's some quick taps. Oof, there it is again. See? I understand why they're getting him out of there. There's a nice quick kill. Arthurs can come back. Whoa, they got a team kill there. That evens it up if Arthur can capitalize on this, especially with them getting the team kill. That's the first, like, actually playable team kill we've seen so far because of the close melee um, and not having them broken up. So this could be something that's really good for, uh, for the king group. Nice. Dolly nice double faint. Good spin. Still a high block. Faints into a low shot. Oof. Ooh. He just got behind him there just enough to kind of faint shot him. Uh, and that ended up being really good for him. Let's see if we get an idea what these lines are looking like when they're coming in. Not as cool as the group fight, but you can sort of see... The push. You got a quick tab over, quick stab over there. Okay, he can regroup now. Arthur's got to do some work real quick, but he can't. And not that it's any fault by his. It's just there is a definite challenge when you're down a person, and especially when you're down a person and the other group is not allowing a 1v1. They're more centered on a 2v1 or a 3v1. You're going to have a higher likelihood that you're going to get a stab through in those situations. So if you're a little bit closer together, Yes, you've got to worry about target switching. You've got to worry about people spinning and getting behind and getting a tag. But at the same time, there's the potential to get the support from your other team. As these two break off, you see him kind of stay there because he's worried about him capitalizing. And you'll see that right there. No, this is going to be GG. Galahan's going to hold. He's going to look for a team kill. And that's what he's doing. He's running through the main group, throwing up a block that he's going to hold and hope that he's going to get them to have a team kill on somebody else. Um, it's a solid play, but it's sort of one of those last minute plays. It wasn't something that you should be doing at the start of a melee battle, but when it's 3v1 or if it's a group fight and you're the last person running through that main center of the group, tossing up some blocks and hoping you can pull a team killer to can really even the playing field. 51st versus Sir. 51st has been looking really solid, and they did really, 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 really good in the last tournament, too. So That was close. Open melee from the back. He should get a backstab here easily. It went a little too early. Nice. Five v one or five one right now, but it's easy to come back five one. There's definitely a potential for people being able to come back in these deficits when you still have a couple of games left in you. Yeah, they were able to break them off there. 
nice. 51st. All right, 6 1. Hi, Poppy. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to show the other side this round. That was interesting. You had a, a chance there where he tried to pull them over so they were still support. Now you got a 2v1. No, they're not close enough right now. Call up downs. See, they're not... Yep, they're not capitalizing on the 2v1. Nice. Good block, good spin. Nice feints. Wasn't centered onto it to get the stab. Good distance. Galahan pulls that one out. What's the format first to seven? I thought this... Uh... <laughs> I thought it was first to seven was the the second round so right now it's six two so it should be game point right now but yeah second round's first to seven i think uh third round's ten maybe i'll have to confirm with ostro there you go thank you safety here's your here's your three v one let's see if he can get him to force a team kill Nice run through. Focuses on a 1v1. Looks for a backstab, but just can't pull it out. That is nice GG. Safety, I think you're right. All right. Let's take a look at the bracket. That's not bad at all. Interesting. Some people are saying they're lagging, but uh, it doesn't quite look what's going on. All right, here we go. Now, this is that strong line of the 63E we saw, but also the strong line that we saw for Sin. So this will be interesting to see two regiments of 63E, sort of a different approach in how they're playing the line uh, compared to Sin. Sin gets two. Ooh. That was pretty impressive. Again, this one is to seven. They, 63 didn't quite hold the line as strong as they were last match. Um, but it looks like Sin is kiting and trying to pull for a stab on a, uh, a pick to get an individual knocked out early. Like right there is, you got a team, no, it wasn't a team kill on that. It looked like it was close. Nice spin trying to get it through. They're able to get a kill, and you get a 3v1 here. It gets bandaged. There you go. 1-1. One, one. <coughs> That's not bad. That's pretty strong. These teams feel a little bit more evenly matched than we've seen in any of the other uh, games so far. So this could be very interesting to see if how high this goes uh, in rounds. You get a pick in the middle. You get a backstab there. Real good chance for the 63 to capitalize on another round there just by the luck of a one-stab kill. They're trying to do up-downs on him, so they're trying to focus on doing... 
an up throw and a down throw at the same time to try to break through his blocks. Um, but Elf is doing fantastic. There's the kill you got there. Kind of Joe. Some solid 1v1 right here. Nice spin. Nice feints. Wow. Oof. That was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful damn 1v1. Let's see if I can pull up some of the uh, the rankings from Ostros in here on particular people. Because that was really damn cool to see. I thought he had... I thought he had Elf rated pretty highly, but I don't see it right now. I'll have to take a look. That was a crazy, crazy friggin' round. There's the, you get a little bit of a touch on that middle person there. NA only, that's why, okay. I thought he had some of the EU people ranked, but he only has NA people ranked. And this is the tough thing about this game. Like, it, it, there is a real big separation between the NA players, North American players, and the EU players. It's almost damn impossible to get any sort of understanding of an EU player versus an NA player because of how uh, much even 50 ping imp impacts somebody. So. three one sixty three again those, these are just seven i'm already out of beer okay it's only been 30 minutes jesus just have everyone play on aussie servers <laughs> easy fix i don't know if there are any like true well i guess you could get an aussie server right but i'll tell you there is definitely a big difference nice kill by salty see if they can capitalize here who's up still elf there used to be one. I think we should all go play on those China servers and have like a 300 ping and see how that goes. Nice. 63 pulls another. Um, it's crazy on the difference of going even from a server where there's a Chicago server. There is definitely a Chinese server. I saw that. I went on there and I was like, I can't play here. But there's some servers if they're in Chicago for me. Um, and I get a 33 ping compared to a 66 ping to a mid coast, west coast. Um, I can feel the difference in gameplay. Like, you have to almost play differently when you have an increase of 30 to 50 ping. Ooh. Nice. You know what? That that lucked out because he, he had made it through the line and had an opportunity to get a stab there. You got to regroup. Watch the back stab here for Salty. Salty target switches. He tries to give him to come in and overcommit. A little bit of a faint kill there. Elf has amazing survivability. I will say it is very impressive to see his survivability. And he pulls the round down. It's an EU event. So, well, it looks like these, like, so if I'm in an EU server, I'm usually 120 ping. 120, 130 ping, generally. Um, but these dudes that have 30 and 60 ping can play a little bit differently. Even some of the EU people that come over um, to the NA servers or the vice versa, there's definitely a, a different game style of play or different different style of gameplay that they uh, they have to focus on to make sure that they're getting their blocks and getting their stabs through. Oh, you get a little tag on tallest right there as uh, Salty Stick got a little bit over aggressive there. You get a 2v1 gets knocked down to a 1v1. They try to regroup, but they're still open melee. So if you get a good target switch, you could get somebody that backstabs here right now. You see the, the target switch from Joe? There it goes, and he ends up capitalizing on it, so they can both go at top. Nice. Hell of a round there. But that's something that you, you don't see from a lot of uh, new players or target switches like that, where they're focusing on hitting one target, and somebody else comes in with a, a, a block already fixed, and you can do a little bit of a spin and refocus your, your stab and take somebody down. These aren't nitro pours. I shouldn't have poured it like that. Looks like we've got a little bit of a team switch over here with somebody that was one and seven. So they're going to bring in cool and 73 to try to hopefully help out the, uh, help out the group. Cheers. Oh, 
open melee. You got a 2v1 here. If they can take one person down or even a... Eek. Yikes. It looked like Tallis was going to try to regroup with Salty, but the, the footwork that uh, Coolin had on him really prevented him to make it over there. Coolin probably was a, a very good sub at the time uh, for Julian. And I think one of the things that you'll see is it, it sometimes isn't just about the individual skill that someone has. Sometimes it is really centered on um, style versus style. One might even argue that set the setting-wise, Hold Fast is a European game. I, I would agree with you from a setting and, and sort of a historical perspective. I mean, I don't think there's any disagreements there. And I think the one cool thing is that there is definitely... A uh, there is definitely more of an international vibe in this game, which is very awesome. Um, we have one dude. Oh, nice hit by Salty Stick. We have a dude that plays with us from Estonia, um, and a lot of people. When you have uh, 63E, it's kind of cool to connect with the EU group or people from a different area. Nice win by 63 there. But there's something that I've really enjoyed about this game is sort of the the broader appeal. Game point to 63 in this one. The broader appeal to the EU group that you have, it's, it's kind of cool to talk to other people from other countries. And uh, it, it just makes the game more enjoyable from a community standpoint. Let's see if 63 can clutch this one. I will be very surprised. I thought this would go higher. We had a Malaysian dude, too. Barely spoke English crazy. It's something that's beautiful. Like in the end, I've I've been really privileged to do a lot of travel. Ooh, here we, that that was a very very cool kill feed right there. And you got a chance right now that Elf could hold it out and keep them alive for another round, but it doesn't work out. They're able to get the kill in 63 takes the round down. But no, this game is very cool in the sense of the communities that it builds. It really is a bunch of fun. So you got heroes versus 63 in the next round. I think it's first to ten. <laughs> but it's it is definitely very cool to talk to a lot of people and talk to you about the experiences that they're having um why is that looking weird <laughs> I used to blow kisses to everybody in voip you know and it, it's one of the things that I, i've told a lot of people playing this game if you're getting into the game initially like listen public is fun Public is just chaos, right? Like, it's it's just insanity. They're going to have a first to five third place match. Okay. So this will be Sin versus Sir Sir King. <laughs> But no, I think if, if people were more able to enter these sort of organized experiences and it's not just the chaos kind of like ear wrecking sound of the public matches, you can get a really good community going. Um, so there's there's some things that really benefit from these these organized experiences. And one of them is definitely the connection of different countries and different people and different cultures. Um, and honestly, it is it is definitely one of the things that keeps the game together. I agree, Zen. I 100% agree. And it's one of those things like, as you see these new features coming in, public and line battles are almost two sides of a coin that cannot exist without the other. It's a shame that there was such a negative sentiment to it too. You know, I, I don't know if there's a negative sentiment of like saying that publics are bad um, and that line battles are more um, the thing people should be doing. I, I don't have that opinion. I just think it's the way the game's set up to find the community, right? I think if I hadn't been streaming Naval, because I love the Naval part of this game, if I hadn't been streaming Naval and had somebody that was in 63 that came into my chat and was like, hey, have you ever done the regular version? Like, have you had any interest in doing public line battles? I, I'm not sure if the game would have sustained my playership. Um, and it's not because it's a bad experience in public, but I think the in any game where you're able to connect with the community, 
that can keep you connected and engaged to the group. And as long as you're connected and engaged to a group of people, the more often you're going to come back. And the more often you're going to come back is when you open up sort of the competitive experiences. I hate how uh, naval is unoptimized and uh, naval line battles. It's like, I've never been in a naval line battle. And that's something I would love to experience still. I was, uh, I think I got hooked on Black Wake um, initially, which was a, it, it's, it's, I, I'm not a huge fan of what it is now because <clears throat> they don't happen. I know they fixed some of the net code, so there's been some optimization um, and they've changed it now where like it's basically load and push, um, but I've not attended a Blackfish Saturday night event yet, quite yet. They do it with a single life and mix it up. Oh, I'll have to try to give that a shot. I think I would enjoy that. I'll have to talk to some of the Blackfish people and see if I can get into one. Mostly because I, I think the uh, the naval stuff is... The naval stuff for this game is the revolutionary part um, to me. At least it's one of those things I'm like, yep, this is a point and shoot. I do enjoy the melee mechanics, but the coastal siege battle would be cool to play. The coastal siege would be very interesting. If they could kind of join the two. Ooh, quick kill there. That's something that they're really going to have to capitalize. You got a backstab that came in there. Nothing he could do about that. Oof. That was a solid round for them. 3-1. All right. Is sub cooling out again? Or no, he was from last round. Beautiful spin by Bandage there. They're able to come in there, take another out. That was a strong round by Sin. So the last time that they had the uh, the EU um, 3v3, they only had four teams that came out, but Sin placed second. So um, it, it sucks to see him in third here, not making it to the main stage of the uh, the finals, but... They are really having a good showing. Sin are seriously scaring you. <laughs> They're good. And L for ELF, you know, anytime I see him in melee four, he's, you know, he's a strong friggin' meleeer. Oof. That was a great target switch there to take one down and get him down to a 3v2. And he's trying to see him pull away. They're trying to pull away and make sure that there's not an opportunity for a backstab. Oof. He had the block up, but he, he let it go too early, and he was able to get through that. There's the backstab. They are wizards, man. I agree. I fought Elf. I don't think I fought Bandage yet, uh, Bandage, but I've, I've I've definitely seen him play, um, but I've definitely fought Elf, and I'm like I can't get past him. Again, EU versus NA two, but I block Pirate. You dead now? <laughs> Funny. <coughs> All right, here's the finals. Looks like finals are uh, first to 10. And the final bracket is going to be a little bit different here. Um, final bracket, 63 versus Heroes. I think this is going to be an interesting uh, style of game that we're going to see between the two, especially seeing the style of gameplay that Heroes was implementing that made them into the final round versus this round of uh, the 63 team that we're seeing. The 63 team is much more centered on a, uh, on a line focus. In the first game against Heroes and Brotherhood, I don't think we saw it as much, but uh, Heroes were able to really plow through the, brother, the Brotherhood group. Uh, in the next round, you ended up having Heroes and Gentlemen, same thing. It's two strong teams making it into the finals here, so this should be really cool to watch. And off we go. You got the 51st on the right, 63 on the left. You already see a pick that comes in. Quick hit there. Let's see if you can get a team kill. No luck. 
Yeah. And I think this is where we're going to see the difference between the two. 63E hosted a coastal siege. We stopped siege when our population reached 100. Coastal siege was really fun. I've seen some uh, YouTube videos from the coastal siege uh, experiences, but I haven't played in one yet. That's something that I'm looking forward to at some point. All right. Not quite sure what's going on here. Looks like 51st, we're having a little bit of a conversation about the gameplay, which is good because there's definitely two approaches here like we were talking about before the match started. You've already got them broken off here. Oh, my gosh. 51st, are we going to have to figure out how they want to approach the 63's line? And here it is. You've got a really nice 3v1 that's turned into a 1v1. Um, and this goes to show. Talos is trying to find a way around the nice. But that goes to show there is a potential in a 3v1 really to refocus and get it back to a 1v1. It is absolutely possible. Depending upon individual skill and a little bit of luck, you can get it there. And there you saw Tallis. Tallis was holding the right side off, but ended up target switching. Oh, and you get a really unfortunate team kill there. Tallis gets a tag on two people. Then you get a 3v1. Can you give your dog a pepper? I got two of them here. Newman, come here, buddy. You want a treat? Thought I had another biscuit for you. There you go, bud. Right here. Can you come up? Can you come up? Can you come up? No. I've got two boxers here. One is passed out, and I don't think he wants to really hang out at all, and the other is just, like, sniffing at the door, seeing if the cat's out there. Ooh, real two. You got another team kill there on 63. And that's some of, that's some of the challenge that they'll experience in the uh, these battles that are so close to proximity to one another is the potential oh he was going for the up box but it looked like he was able to get around two v two this has gotten really 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 competitive here this is really cool to watch That's really unfortunate to see the team kills that ended up happening in those uh, last two rounds. That put 63 definitely at a big deficit to, to maneuver through, but at the same time, off. Oh. Salty's got to regroup. Hopefully get a quick kill. Looked like he got a quick tag. Oh, there we go. You get it back to a 1v1. He's already tagged out, so he's got an advantage right now here on this guy. Chang. Some solid feints. He tries to get around him with a spin. Oof. And that's the issue with spin players. Like, spin players are going to get around solid blockers. They're going to get around and find a tag on somebody. And, and that's exactly what that happened right there is that you saw these sort of like 50-50 shots that both people are rejecting the, the melee stabs. Um, but if you can get the right angle on somebody, you can get behind them and get a tag on them either for like the, the quarter or half hit. And he was able to do that. Oof. There's the backstab that he was able to pull off. Tallis is smart. He regroups, tries to see if he can backstab the other player. They try to get an up-down going. Tallis gets tagged in the process. They regroup and get it to a 1v1. Tallis ends up clutching that round. Holy crap. At one point, that was really cool to see the, the, the chess match that was going between the two. You had really an opportunity that any group could have won that. And Tallis was able to really clutch the end of the round there.
four two sixty three. Again, these are to ten. Sixty three does the the standard strong line there. You get a quick hit onto Copperfield with a low throw. He regroups with his other player, which is strong, to try to get the line back going. And then you're just hope. Who's this? Tallest again. Let's see if Tallest can clutch it out again. He's got to get a quick kill, though. And that's the thing. Like, if you're able to get it down to a 1v2, 1v3, you've got to hope for the quick view. Never thought Hold Fast could pull 4,000 views. Also, IRL, people more than 18, 18 a gunship. Yeah, true. I mean, that would make sense, right? One of the dogs just farted really bad. They're trying to find a stab. That was an interesting play. He sort of like tried to circle around the back of them uh, to try to get a stab like diagonal against the other player. Not even against the mid player. Oh, didn't work out. That'll even it out 4-4. Four, four. You know nothing about Twitch. <laughs> Twitch, I mean, listen here. If I'm if I'm casting just a regular match that I'm playing in, I can get five, I can get six viewers, and that's on a good night. If I'm catching a tur casting a tournament, I can get 20 to 30. Like it is definitely hold fast is a tough Twitch game to stream, but in the same time, like uh, it is fun to stream and I enjoy doing it. So if I can get a little bit more publicity on hold fast in these tournaments, maybe we can get some more people into the communities. And at the same time, as we get more people into the communities, we can have some stronger line battles. We can have some stronger melee. Ooh, kind of Joe. They both threw. That was a 50, 50 throw 51st pulls into the lead for the first time in this bracket five to four. Thank you. And if you're new, guys, if you're new to coming to hang out in the stream, I appreciate you to toss me a follow. I try to stream nightly um, for the 63 events. I'm not saying you have to come and be involved in the 63, but the more you can support, oof, tough first kill. And the more you can support and just swinging by and saying hello, it definitely helps a ton. Salty stick. Oh, dang. Um, subbing does cost, so follows are free. Subbing, if you have Twitch Prime, which is linked to your Amazon Prime account, you can sub for free. It's a part of your Twitch Prime. You get one sub a month. So that way you can get a, uh, a free sub and you get an awesome, weird-looking bearded icon that you can use in the emote uh, for chat. Um, and also some other wonderful things, like actually being a part of the community here. But uh, follows help out a ton. Bag of Milk Waste, thank you for the follow, my friend. A underscore bag underscore of underscore Milky Ways is Very growing a beard. Thank you guys so much for the follows. I really, really, really appreciate it. But I do try to stream as much as I can. Vadeha Sasma is growing Solid. a beard. I hope all of you grow fantastic beards in your lives. At least once. This is probably the short end of my beard recently because uh, I had to look professional at work for one day. I got a little bit, got a little bit scraggly. 51st is really turning the tides here on the 63 this is crazy is growing a beard. Man, thank you so much for the follow i appreciate it eight to four like all of a sudden right there in just the the little bit of time you saw what could happen if uh you let a team get on a streak we went and saw it four to four four quick rounds right there and all of a sudden we're eight to four so we've got to see 63 come back from a little bit of a deficit there Fifty first has really figured him out. The original hobo. <laughs> original hobo is there. We go. Sixty three is coming back a little bit. They're eight to four. I tried growing out recently. I had a quote from the janitor. It took. <laughs> it looks like a hamster died on my cheeks. You know what? It takes a while. I think uh, I I've been rocking a beard for a long time, and someone sent me a picture from when I was in high school, and I I. I didn't realize the first thing that I tried to go were these like god awful sideburns, man. But you know what? It's worth it. 
You got broken melee here, and this can get pretty dangerous, and it does for the 63E. 63E gets into a 1v1, 3v1, and they knock it down pretty, pretty. Oh, that's a rough round. You got so many people that were spread out right now there. It was hard to hard to stay there. You need to let it grow. Let it flow. Uh, I've only ma I've managed the yeard once. So only one time in my life have I managed to actually grow it for a year and not trim it. And uh, my God, it was it was a thing of gourd, a thing of glory. But here we go, game point to the 51st. Let's hope the 63 can pull off a win here and stay a little. Up, oh, you got a kill over there. You got open melee in the big. You got a backstab. Salty Stick's gonna have to clutch this to keep the 63 E in the game. It's looking tough. They're a little bit spread out and it might allow him to pick one. He gets a tag on one of the other guys for a nice little bit of a hit, but he's got his back to the other guy. He's gonna get a backstab. He gets tagged. And there it is. That's GG. Oh my gosh. That was a great, solid final round. It, 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 with the 10 5, it's not going to show how evenly matched these two teams were. That was an awesome, awesome final round to see, especially with the 51st coming back from that. Seriously, big GG to everybody in the tournament today. That was absolutely crazy. Those were solid matches all through. I really like big props to Ostro to putting these things together. Uh, I think one of the biggest things in seeing this, it definitely 100% um, is a credit to him and making sure that these things. Oh, and my lights have gone purple because we got so many follows. Apparently, I have an if this then that trigger set up. And if I get more than like five follows, they turn purple. But it's kind of freaking me out. Oh, that was a solid, solid game. I've got to change that back before it blinds me. Holy crap. What is this purple light, Twitch? I'm going to see if I can jump in. I don't know if they will let me jump in. Who's playing right now? They're shooting, so I'm going to jump in and say hey. See if we can get an in-game interview. Hey, you guys did awesome. You got anything to say to the 21 viewers are hanging out with me on Twitch after that wonderful win? <laughs> 63 had a great plan. Hey, Sealand, how's it going? So apparently, it's what I'm hearing is that people are not happy with the server. Thank you, tallest. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyways, I think it was a, I don't know what the, I don't know what people are experiencing with the server. Like, I'm not sure what the ping story was, but it looked like things were pretty decent. So I'm not sure why there's a, some people that are having a little bit of a tough time. Um, but it was definitely an awesome tournament, I think for, uh, for Zen or for Zen for Ostra to put on. So, uh, it was cool to see as many great people up there. The lemon ski is growing a beard. Thank you so much for the follow. I much appreciate it. I don't know why I'm in here right now because I'm just going to get absolutely murdered by all these amazing melee. Let's see if I can get a spin on him. Nope. I think somebody shot him. Yep, that's how it's going to happen. Um, but I really appreciate everybody that was here today. I'm going to toss the video up on YouTube so some of the, uh, the regiments that were in the tournament can actually see it. Um, but seriously, thank you guys so much for the support and uh, like a big props to everybody that came in and dropped a follow. If you haven't dropped a follow quite yet, I'd really encourage you to do it. It's something that I will continue to do is to make sure that I do some of these uh, competitive streams to make sure that people can see some of these awesome meleeers and awesome players in the game. Because Holdfast really does have a great community beyond just the public matches. It has a great set of competitive experiences for people that are into it it's got a great above all competitive melee community and it's something that's kept me around and i've very much enjoyed it and i'm gonna get slaughtered here because in the end i'm only a melee level two and i think ostro gave me six points and some of these dudes in here on the eu side are fan freaking tastic so i'd really appreciate everybody if you have the opportunity to drop a follow so you can come watch the next set of uh, uh, tournaments um but uh until then uh if you want to hang out oh, i got a kill and team killed by there <laughs> 
But if uh, all of that, and if you're somebody that's out there that's celebrating St. Patrick's Day, I wish you a ha- happy St. Patrick's Day. Salancha to you. Um, I am uh, heading down to our local parade to go celebrate with some friends and family as well, myself. Um, but until then, uh, I think I've got to sh- shoot a host to somebody. I think that's a requirement at some point is if I get this many viewers, I've got to shoot a host to somebody. Um, and there's nobody streaming hold fast right now. Surprise, surprise. Um, but what I will do is shoot a host to, let me see who's on right now. Oh my God. Killing AFKs dudes. Oh, let's see here. There's some people that are paying division two and I've been watching a little bit and tainted rumbler has been a, a solid streamer that I've interacted with in the past. Um, who's doing a lot of things with squad and stuff. So, um, if you don't mind, go in there, hang out with him, watch some of the stream. I know he'll enjoy it. I hopefully think that you'll enjoy it. But I appreciate everybody coming in and talking, to, uh, hanging out, talking in the chat, dropping some balls, dropping some subs. I'll see you guys around. Happy St. Patrick's Day. If I can get this to host. Come on. Come on. Oh, did he just go offline? That's why I can't. No, he's there. Bye.